In this quick tip video, I'm going to show you the process that I typically use when importing new meshes into the engine. Um, a couple steps that I go through for verifying that the UV is imported correctly, um, automatically generating some LEDs quickly. Um, I, I won't go through setting up the switch out distances. That's in another quick tip video. Um, but then also checking to make sure the light map settings um, are totally fine um, and so on and so forth. So let's get started. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this mesh. Now beyond the fact that the materials are already um, assigned to their proper things, that is the only difference between this and a base mesh. Typically when you import a new mesh into Unreal, you'll, you'll have your material slots, but obviously no materials assigned to them. So beyond just assigning materials ahead of time, um, that's the only difference. So. The first step that I'll do is I'll go through and I'll check my UV. So I'll look at channel zero, which is the, um, th those are the visual UVs that you use for assigning materials uh, from your DCC program, which in this case is Maya. Now, immediately I can notice that I have some overlapping UVs. So this is not a good thing. Um, so with this particular mesh, I would jump back into um, Maya in the case of what I use, and I would go ahead and just relay out the UVs to make sure I didn't have any overlapping UVs, uh, but we won't do that right now. The second step that I'll go through is my light map. So I'll look at UV channel zero. Uh, I'm sorry, channel one. So real quickly, if you don't know, channel zero is the UVs that you typically set up in your um, uh, whatever program you're using to create your 3D meshes. And UV channel one, if you haven't set up a secondary UV set, uh, is what Unreal automatically generates inside of the engine. Now, these UVs are specifically used for your light map. Um, so it's important that you have enough resolution um, and enough spacing to capture um, the lighting and shadow details, um, and I'll show you how to fix that. Uh, but just know that UV channel 1 is specific to light maps. Now, um, I won't go into it in this video, but there's uh, I know there's some documentation out there to where you can set up your UV channel 1s manually. However, I will tell you that about 99% of the time, uh, the automatic LOD, um, gen or the, the automatic generation for your UV channel 1s inside Unreal uh, works absolutely fine. Um, so, uh, as I said, we'll switch over to UV channel 1, which is this, and the, the thing that I'm looking for is the spacing. Now, by default, I think it usually defaults to about 64 on your light map resolution. Um, and this is working for verify. Granted, this is a little bit bigger prop, so the spacing in between is probably too much. So I want to adjust that so I have better resolution. So to do that, um, what you'll want to do is you want to, um, again, with the mesh imported just like this, I'm going to expand my LOD zero. If I go to sections, there's my materials, and I'm going to expand build settings, okay? Something to note here, you want to go into the build settings and not this general settings light map, because if I change this, nothing happens. Okay, so I'm going to go into LOD zero under my build settings, and here's the minimum light map resolution. Now it's important to note, you can actually change these directly on import um, or leave them as default. It's totally fine up to you, but if you notice, these are the same import settings that you have when you first import the mesh. So under minimum light map resolution, I'm going to change this to 128. I'm gonna hit apply changes. And if you notice, the uh, the UVs are gonna change. In particular, watch this space. And so let's go ahead and apply. You notice it packs it a lot better. Now, let's just go ahead and take this up to say like 256 and reapply. You notice it starts packing a lot more together. Um, We'll change it back to 128. Um, again, be careful with this. It's, it's outside the scope of this video, um, but that's the way that you can change your minimum light map resolution. So when it goes to whoever else in your department, maybe that's you, maybe that's uh, your level designer, um, art director. Uh, this is just a great way to make sure that it's got proper resolution um, for that. Now, as a general rule of thumb, how do you know what's the proper resolution? That just comes from working on your project, um, but then you'll start having an eye for this spacing, right? If you look at the, the spacing in between the UV um, shells, you'll know if you've got too much or too little. So if I say, say take this down to 32, that's obviously way too little, right? Too much spacing. I can bump it up to 64. Uh, again, if I had been doing this for a while on the project, I would say, ah, no, this is too little. Take it up to 128 and done. 
The next thing is just to go ahead and quickly set up um, automatic LODs. So with this one, LOD group, um, again, I talked about in the previous video with setting up LODs and customizing it. These are just the defaults that ship with the engine. You can create your own. Um, you may have somebody on your team who's preset up some of these presets, um, but just know that it's just rules and stuff. So, um, but in this situation, I'll just go ahead and set up LODs really quickly. I'll just do say large prop. That's fine. Um, and then I will just cycle through. Now there's a couple ways to do this. You can do your LOD picker. You can select here, or you can go up to this tab here and cycle through things. So real quickly, I will just go through, say LOD zero looks fine. LOD one still looks fine. LOD two, if you notice the material actually swapped out. So if I go back to LOD uh, zero one, that's fine. You notice you got this blue, the blue flicker of the bar, but in LOD two, it's gone. So that's just right here. So if the LEDs expanded. I'm going to change this from flat metal to my LED blue. There we go. That's fine. And LED three, same thing, LED blue. And that's it. And then I will save my mesh. And then you could pitch it off, um, transfer it to somebody else who's going to set up and level design. Um, however, that gets um, a good portion of the base stuff done um, ahead of time. So that way, you know, say for example, um, you're working on a project, tight deadlines, and you know, somebody forgets to check the LODs or they forget to check material associations. You've already set up ahead of time um, and that's it. And then um, I'll save it. The last bit that I go through is just checking collision. So in this case, um, I'm going to go through simple collision. Now, this did a, a really nice job of it. Um, granted, I didn't I didn't set up any collision in Maya ahead of time. This was the engine doing it. Um, works totally fine. But let's say in the situation that this wasn't, I, I didn't really like this. Right, like the collision. Say for example, um, I've seen it on some um, that I import a prop. But the collision is this massive sphere that's all over the place, way too big. Um, so we'll just quickly generate some custom collision in this one. So select your collision, which if you turn your collision on, simple collision, you select it, it'll highlight. So if you notice it's not, not selected, selected now, go ahead and just hit delete. Now collision is completely removed. Um, I'm going to go up to here. Um, you can do a bunch of these settings. Um, I'll, I'll let you read through in the documentation on that without going through each one. Uh, but it, one that I will typically use a lot as quick setup is this auto convex collision. Um, so it will scan the surface. It'll voxelize it and find out, okay, what's the best volume to encapsulate this and create it for you. So whole count, um, this depends on how, uh, essentially think about it kind of like um, uh, how many, different shells you want, right? Because it's got to be completely convex, right? So it can't have any divots or anything like that. Um, you want to determine how many do you want. So I'll keep it at four, max hole verts. Uh, I'll lower this because I don't need it. And then hole precision, this is how close you want it to follow. Um, again, there's no general rule of thumb. Just think about, um, uh, you can just play with it. I'll quickly hit apply using these settings. And mm, that's not too bad. Um, we'll go into wireframe mode to see. So that's the collision. Um, not too good. So let's go ahead and take that down. We'll bump up our, our vert count a little bit and we'll take our precision all the way up and quickly hit apply. And yeah, that's, that's better. Um, again, without going too deep into um, what's what, um, it's probably a bad example because it's a box because you just simple box collision, but, um, so you had a more complex prop, um, or something that was, um, definitely a, a much more organic looking mesh. Um, this is the next step you would do. And then after that, that's pretty much it. So I've, I've quickly set everything up that I need to, this would be shipped off. Um, again, it could go to a level designer, somebody to verify, check it, put it in engine, um, but that's the process that I will normally run through just to verify that as the artist creating this asset, that everything has imported correctly. It's the way that it looks. Um, light map resolutions are good. Collisions fine. Um, and then quickly setting up some LODs. Um, that's just a, a general nice process. Each time I go through a mesh of importing it fresh, um, that I use. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this quick tip. Um, again, if you guys have ideas for things that you would like to see um, in the future, um, I would love to hear that from you so I can create some of those videos and show you that process. Um, and as always, thank you for watching.